We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Uh, Michael says, thanks. Uh, first of all, he thanks us for our suggestions regarding which speakers to audition out of the small selection of variable is, uh, available in his area. He's trying out the Focal, Focal Chorus 705s, the Wharfdale Diamond 225s, Axiom Audio M3s, all of which fit in his budget. We also said he might want to try some clips, JBL speakers from Best Buy, any particular models. And I see there's some here. And... Yeah, um, there, there isn't a huge selection to go uh, by anyway, so it's it's not too challenging uh, to figure out. Uh, so the Klipsch R15s, that's part of their reference series, they're $400 Canadian a pair, so they're within his $7 per pair budget. Uh, the JBL Studio 230s, those are $650 a pair, but still under $700 per pair. Uh, and I will also throw in the Definitive Technology Studio Monitor 45s, which are $600 a pair. Be a little careful there. They're sold individually on Best Buy's site, so they're $300 each. You will, of course, need to buy two of them to get a pair. Uh, but since it's Best Buy and it's easy returns, there's no real reason not to try all three of those why not have some auditions have a party yeah think of all the miles you're getting your credit card uh he noticed that right. some of the speakers mentioned using paper cones for the woofers we've talked about how driver materials don't necessarily indicate sound quality but paper michael's just having a hard <laughs> time wrapping his mind around that well dude you have a hard time wrapping your mind around that while you're listening to your wharfdale diamond 225s wrap your mind around the fact that they have what's called a soft dome tweeter which is made out of <laughs> silk you got a hard time thinking about paper how's silk doing for you up there huh <laughs> but uh i actually looked in to see what speakers had silk dome tweezers because i knew one of them was going to have it because they, they all oh, sure. some, some of them do uh do you want to know uh the dirty little secret of woofer design many 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 speaker designers I've talked to have said they much prefer paper dome paper to anything else because it's super hard. You can treat it and you can make it really, really, really hard and it yeah, will I mean, do exactly what you want. But there's a lot of people out there just like you and who go paper dome tweeter uh, woofer as well. That sounds weird. And they look at like the sexier looking gold woofers on the clips <laughs> and they go well that must be better look how sexy that thing looks and look at this is just a black kind of hairy because sometimes they look kind of weirdly fuzzy you know woofers that's gotta be that looks like garbage and this looks you know high tech and sexy and i think there's a, quite a few speaker manufacturers out there that would be much much prefer if you if they knew that you were never going to take the grill off there'd be paper behind there'd be paper in every single one of those domes what if i called it woven cellulose fiber would there that you help? go because you could that's what it Ro is. Woven fiberglass <laughs> is what uh, what those what all the the ones that used to be called Kevlar that they're not allowed, not allowed to call. It. Some of them still do call them Kevlar, but Kevlar does not like if that. They, if if they've licensed the name, you can call it Aramid fiber because that's the generic name yep. for Kevlar. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, um, w this isn't like a a piece of you know letter sized paper that you write on that that's not what they're yeah. using it's 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 cellulose fiber i mean it's it's the same material that makes paper but it is a very very stiff usually treated with many coatings of stuff like that it's a, it's a very stiff uh material that has good self-damping properties uh you yeah. know when when the cone starts to move slightly irregularly it damps itself it doesn't just start to wobble and and ring uncontrollably which is what uh, metal so does. paper can be a yeah, paper can be a great material for a, for a woofer cone, and many, many woofer cones use it. So, yeah, uh, yeah don't get too hung up on Remember, it uh, used to be a idea. tree. So, I mean, you wouldn't say a tree was weak. So, there you go. Uh, what should he do with his PSB 5T towers, assuming that one of the bookshelf models pleases him enough to keep it? He could actually move them surround duty, but he feels like that would be a little strange. He's not sure how much he could <laughs> sell them for in the used market. So, any ideas? Uh, it is not necessarily strange to use them as surrounds. I mean, you can uh, just if make they sure fit better there. Yeah. If you're if if you really like them and you want to keep them, I got no problems with that. You're just gonna have to cross them over. You do not want them playing, you know, low frequency subwoofer stuff or trying to do that back there. Do not set them to large, even though they're physically large speakers. Set them to small and cross <laughs> them over at eighty hertz. Yeah. And there's no there's no reason why you couldn't have them back there. That, that's fine. Yep. Uh, but if you decide that you do want to sell them, I would 
absolutely, since uh, Michael is in Canada, uh, point you to Canuck Audio Mart. Uh, I think that's the best place uh, as far as for Canadians to sell their used gear. I looked it up. Somebody was selling a pair of PSB T5 towers for $400 for the pair. I actually think that's a really good deal because um, they're about $1,200 Canadian new. Uh, or they were when they were still available because I think they're a discontinued model at this point. Um, yeah, but I think that's actually a very reasonable price. I you would could... probably price them at like $500 a pair, see if you get any offers. Uh, you know, as long as they're in good condition. If they're all dinged up and look horrible, then obviously you'll need to decrease the price. Right. right. Uh, but if they're in good condition and they still work, I'd, I'd probably try pricing them at about 500 bucks for the pair and put them on Canuck and more. If nobody bites, lower the price. But there I'd you go. There. That's not a bad idea. Once your question answered, send it to question at avrant.com. A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.